Welcome everybody to Azure Static Web Apps. This is all about reliability in your web architecture. And I'm John Papa, along with my colleague, Dan Wally. I'm Dan Wally. I'm excited to be here with you, John. We have a lot of things uh, that'll be fun for folks today. So let's start with why we're here, Dan. I mean, how do you make your web apps reliable, Dan? We have a lot of things we want to do. We need reliable builds and we need reliable deployments and then, you know, keep going. What else do we have? Well, we've got environments too, like staging and production and QA or whatever your environments might be, along with, of course, global scale, things like CDNs, content delivery networks. And then we can wrap things up with, what about security, Dan? Is that kind of important? Uh, maybe just a smidge. Yes, I would say that's critical. <laughs> so I think we can all agree that reliability is a key aspect when deploying web applications. And we're going to demo some of these things for you and how you can do it. But let's first talk about why you might want to do this. So Dan, we're developers and technologists and we like to build web apps, don't we? We do, it's fun. And here we've developed an app that's just shopping at home and something maybe you'd all relate to lately in the, in the world. You want to shop for these kind of items and you can build this kind of an application. It's fun to build applications like this. And I get excited because I get to write code. So it's all about our code. But as developers, there's a lot more to it than just our code, isn't there, Dan? Absolutely. Uh, if it was just code, it'd be straightforward, but walk us through. There's several things we need to factor in, right? Yeah. And you know, it's like the slow descent down this slope of we've got our code. Now we've got to realize we got to push it to source control, possibly GitHub. Not so bad. We also need CI CD to do the integration and then delivery and deployment of our applications with whatever tools we use, maybe Azure DevOps, maybe GitHub Actions. And we also have to have data, like what's an app without data? So now we've got our APIs, our, our functions, our endpoints to hit. So we've got to develop those. And once we deploy our APIs and we've got our application out there, if they're hosted on different places, like maybe we got our app up on a CDN and the APIs are hosted on a different server, we have to deal with cores. And then of course we want SSL to work for us. So we use HTTPS and custom domains. We don't want some random domain. We want our domain like shopathome.dev. And Dan, I like to know when people come to my site that they are who they say they are, don't you? Well, you know, if you're going to sell products and you're going to shop at home, it might be a little bit important because at some point you got to ship those products to these people. So yeah. Exactly. It's all about reliability and security. Not only you have SSL, right? But you, you know, Dan Waleen logs in. It is indeed Dan. And also, what can Dan do and what shouldn't Dan do? So authorization roles are a big piece of that security puzzle. Well, we want global scale because we want to sell everywhere around the world, not just in our hometown. So now we got to worry about those points of presence or CDNs will help us with this. And then ultimately, we want to make sure that we've got this global scale, reliability, security, our builds, our different environments, all this stuff wrapped up and I don't know about you, Dan, but I just wanted to write a web app. <laughs> <laughs> so we just want to publish our apps. And these days, Dan, we have lots of choices, don't we? Like you like to use Angular, don't you? Love Angular, React, you know, Vue's pretty awesome, Svelte. You list all the kind of main ones here and there's others, of course, right? Of course. And, you know, it could be something that's not on this list and, the nice thing about this is we get our choice of what we develop with these days. And no matter what we choose, all these tools have really fundamentally changed the way that the web works over the last several years. And what we mean by that is we usually just have a script tag on a page. Now we have this build process to build our assets. So let's think about this because that requires a server somewhere. Dan, you're probably pretty familiar with, you know, you run NPM run build and hopefully something spins on your computer and out comes your CSS, JavaScript, and HTML, right? Definitely in a perfect world, it outputs it and it actually works the first time. Yeah, and that's this is a, a common thing we all run into these days, but if you think back before we had build processes, we just had script tags and we just kind of put them on a page. But now, because we're bundling and minifying and reducing our file size, this build step is important and we don't want to do it locally in our computers. We want this to work in CI CD. So we can't just 
put CI/CD in a CDN, that like that doesn't work. The CDN does something entirely different. But it all should light up our applications. Now, because of this, what we want is we want this build process to just work for us. And that's where we're here to talk to you about how do we get all these things to work reliably with Azure Static Web Apps? And that's, that's going to do the job for us, isn't it, Dan? Reliability is you know, so key, and you've already highlighted the main areas, um, because when you're building your architecture out, as you already in, implied, it's a lot more than just writing the code. We have all these other areas we have to factor in. Absolutely. And, and my name is John Papa again, and this is Dan Wallin. And we've done this stuff for many years with many technologies. And we want to share with you that what's great about this is now you can get all this reliability without having to go figure out where do I get all those tools and how do they connect together? Because this service is going to do it for you. So what does Azure Static Web Apps really do? In a nutshell, it's going to let you build and host your web apps. You're going to get your authentication authorization. Uh, you can use APIs from Power, uh, Azure Functions if you want. That is optional. Um, we're going to show you without those, uh, I think, in the demo. Right, Dan? Yep. yep. But there'll be another talk coming up with Craig Shoemaker. He'll go into more on that. Yes. So Definitely check out the talk by Craig uh, later on in this conference that will walk through that piece. But we're also going to show how you can do it with GitHub. Uh, optionally, you can also use Azure DevOps for your CI CD piece. So this is just a small snapshot of what we're going to look at. But let's let's do a visual, Dan. Like you write code, you make code changes, right? And then you push them somewhere. <laughs> maybe GitHub, maybe it's Azure DevOps, uh, some kind of source control or continuous delivery uh, mechanism. What Azure Step Web Apps is going to do is then going to take that, it's going to build your code, and it's going to deploy the static content, which is a fancy way of saying your HTML, your images, your fonts, your JavaScript. And it's going to deploy your functions if you have those. And collectively, those things are your web app that's going to go in global scale around the world with multiple points of presence on the CDN, which just connects you with your customer. And Dan, we've talked quite a bit about how it works and what we're going to do, but I think it's time to actually show people, don't you think? I think so. It's always good to see how it works. So we're going to run you through a few demos here. First off, we're going to show the app itself, how we could deploy that into Azure Static Web Apps, uh, have a build environment as part of that. We're also going to look at, you know, once you deploy your app, it's not just enough to deploy it once and, hey, we're done. We never need to touch it again, right? Oftentimes, we either have bug fixes or new features. We're going to talk about how, for instance, when a PR comes in, we can actually have a dedicated environment set up that we can review that PR with Azure Static Web Apps. And then finally, John's going to run us through the security aspect and talk about some of the authentication authorization concepts. Yeah, exactly. And all those pieces we're going to start looking at, you're going to get all those things we showed before all wrapped up in this one service. And with that, I'm going to turn over the reins to Dan to share his screen. So John just did a great job walking us through some of the key features that Azure Static Web Apps offer and, you know, really some of the reliability challenges that not only developers face, but DevOps as well. So what we're going to show you now is how could we get an app up into Azure Static Web Apps and then go into some of these features and show you how it all works. Now, the app we're going to use, we, we could actually choose multiple, right, John? I mean, here's the repo we're going to work with, and you have a preference here? Yeah, I happen to see we got Angular, React, Svelte, and Vue in here. Let, let's go with Svelte because I happen to, it's newer and it's kind of the cool kid in the block. Okay. And as a bonus, it has really fast build times. So yeah, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> so we're going to do some live builds here as we're recording this for you. Um, so first off, I want to show you how you could get this repo, and we'll have a link to what I'm going to show you at the end. So there's some free learning modules. There's a whole learning path on Azure Static Web Apps. And if I come on down to the first module here about publishing the different uh, front-end frameworks, then there'll be a link in the setup that we can go to. All right, so in this exercise, get started. I'm gonna kind of skip over the introduction. What this will do is walk us through kind of the prereqs we need and the repository. Now, to get the repository that John and I were just talking about, all I did was click on this create from template, 
And then it let me actually create a template of that repository. I'd have to come through this process, but in the end, it was actually this repository. So now our goal is to actually move this up into Azure Static Web Apps. And let's walk through that. So John, help me out. What are, what are we gonna do first? Well, we've got a, to make sure I understand, we've, we've got a repo now, which has got the full application in it. We're gonna choose the Svelte app, which happens to be in a subfolder. So I imagine now what we wanna do is have that run through the process of connecting to Azure. So would we go to the Azure portal to do that? You, you might have done this before. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to go to the Azure portal. Now, I do want to mention, we could do all this through something called the Azure CLI. We're not going to do that today because this will be, provide a very visual way. But if I just come up to the search and type static up here in the search, you'll see that we'll have an option here for static web apps. Now, this is one I use a lot, so mine's already kind of at the top because they recognize I use it a lot. But this is gonna pull up some others that are part of a, a option here for a resource, but we're gonna hit create. And then once this create screen loads, what we're gonna do from here is configure it, as John just said, to actually hook up to the GitHub repository. Because John, if we're gonna do a build, we kinda of need to get to the source code, right? Right, so we're just connecting Azure with our code at this point. Exactly. So once it's created this page for a static web app, we can come on in, you pick your subscription. I'm gonna pick a resource group, Sandbox in this case, that's my kind of demos. And then we just give it a name. I'm just gonna call it Reliable App. Now from here, John, tell me a little bit about, we have the free plan, which is great, uh, but you also have standard and just real quick, we can hit compare plans, of course, to learn more, but what are some of the big differences there? Well, the big thing is, you know, you had me at free. Free is free, so we like that. And you can do quite a bit with free. Standard is uh, something which you can basically upgrade to, which you want to get more uh, features out of it. So we can get into the details later, but the big deal is free gets you do everything we're going to show you. Exactly. In fact, everything we're going to need to do for this demo and even other apps, free will cover us. Absolutely fine. Now, the next part is I need to pick a region. And I know, John, the first time I heard about this, I went, well, wait a sec. I thought this is globally distributed with CDNs. So why would a region factor into this at all? It's a great question. There are the, you do get the global CDNs and the global scale. Uh, there's a couple aspects where regions really come into play. And just to leave a little bit of a teaser, we'll talk about that more when you get to your second demo. Sounds good. And show exactly why. Well, now for here, I need to sign in because I need to link up to GitHub. So we're all logged in now, and this is my GitHub account I'm gonna use. Now I'm gonna pick my organization. I'm just gonna pick that account. And now I need to pick what's my repository. Now, like probably a lot of you, I have quite a few repositories, but this one is actually named Reliable Web Summit. So there it is. We'll just type it in, find it, and then I just have one branch, which is main. So that's how we link up the static web app to GitHub. But we have a little bit more because, John, we saw in the repository there was Angular and React and Svelte and Vue, and we kind of need to tell it, right? So walk me through, what, how does this help us out with the build presets? Well, you've got these presets like, you know, we wanted to use Svelte, which is great, but let's go to custom at the bottom because that's going to really show people. It's more steps to fill out, but it's going to show them step by step of what they need to actually think about. Exactly. So what's the app location? Well, for us, because we kind of have a demo repo, ours is Svelte app. A lot of times you might just put slash and leave it at the root like it has in the screen here. If you're using Azure Functions, then you could put the folder that actually contains the function code. And then, of course, what's your build output location? Now, right. fortunately, John, if we're going to pick Svelte, Let's go back and we'll go ahead and do that for this demo. It kind of plugs all that in. Now, I'm not at the root though, right? Right, we're actually in a mono repo, which means it's got multiple things. So you've got to type in svelte-app, I would think. Exactly. So rather than risking typing that, I'm gonna paste it. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and do that. Now, I don't actually have any Azure functions in this project, uh, any code for that, but let's pretend I want to add that in the future. 
The good news is you'll see that the build process just skips over it if you don't have it. So it's not a big deal. It'll say something like, ah, I tried looking for them, didn't find them, moving along. Exactly. Um, now, what this is gonna do, and we'll look at this a little later, but if I click on preview workflow file, this will actually pop up a YAML file, it's called. And we'll take a brief look at this once we get to the actual build. We won't go through it now. But this is actually going to handle our build process for us. This is your CI CD and getting that build process going. So I think we're pretty good. You ready to review and create here, John? Review and create sounds like the next step. Let's do it. <laughs> well, right now it looks like it's the only step I can do. So, hey, we'll, we'll go with it. <laughs> All right, so from here, you'd of course review what you did. Um, the big one I would point out is make sure, obviously the repository really matters, but also the application and output. Those two do really matter because if you get those wrong, it's not gonna be able to deploy it right. Let's go ahead and hit create. It won't, but it's, um, but it's also a good point to point out that it's, if you do that and while it's getting created, if you spelled svelte wrong, as Dan was worried about doing, you do have an opportunity to change that later in the file that he's gonna show. Exactly. Now, what I love about this, it's already done. Um, and there was no edits done to speed that up. Um, it's really fast on creating the initial setup for the service. So I'm going to click on go to resource. And now, if you want to, real quick, John, do you want to walk us through before we start to go back to GitHub? We have all kinds of fun stuff we can do here on the left, right? Yeah, we're going to be looking at a couple of these uh, as when I demo the security as well. But uh, the main page here in Overview gives you a bunch of links as Dan's going to go through uh, to jump over. And then on the left, we've got custom domains, which you can set up for your own domain. Uh, as long as you've got DNS and you have a domain that you've purchased. You've got functions where you can take a look at the functions that got created. Your environments are a great place for you to look at the different environments that you have, like prod and staging. Uh, your role management is a place I'll be diving into, which gets your authorization and security that you can look at. There's a bunch of configuration right here in the portal that you can do. Pretty awesome. So what we're going to do is we're now linked up. Let's go ahead and I'm going to click on this link, Ambitious Hill. You do get some interesting domain names that will create for you. And let's see where we're at right now. Because at this point, it says it's live, but it's waiting for our content. Now, why is that? And the answer is because it takes some time for the build process. And we'll go look at that here in just a sec. So don't be too worried if you see that. And, that, and that's not an Azure thing, Dan, right? Like the build isn't Azure. It's, it's the Svelte app or the Angular app or the React app. Exactly. So should we go look at that real quick? We can run back over to Let's our branch. Let's do it. How do we get there? All right. So you'll notice right here, we can go to our branch. We can also go to GitHub Actions. I'm just going to go to the branch. This will open up the same repository I had over here on the left. And once this loads, we would have a new file, at least we hope we have a new file in here. And then we'll go look at the actions quick, but notice this uh, GitHub workflows, John, and we should have a YAML file in here. There we go. Let's click on that. And then this is the same file I mentioned earlier. And really, I just want to call your attention to notice the app location, Svelte app, API location, functions, output location, public, same things we typed into the Azure portal are here. You do not have to be a build expert to understand these files. It handles everything for you. Pretty nice. So the next piece is let's go look where we're at. It should have kicked off a build and it looks like it did and it's actually already done. And you know that because the uh, there's a green check mark, right? Exactly. So it looks like the close part of it's still being worked on, but let's go drill into this. And this will kind of be like pulling up a console. Um, in fact, if I go to the uh, build and deploy section here, you can see all the output of the build process, which is great because if something does break, you can actually see errors and get all that information right here. All right, so you can see all that. Now, notice Azure Functions will not be created down here at the bottom. Remember I typed a functions folder, but we don't have one. So it just kind of skipped over that and uh, it kept on going. Now there's still a little bit more work to do it looks like on our uh, post build. Once this is done though, we can now go in and we'll be able to go to the website. So we'll give it just a little bit more time there. But do you want to add anything on our build process so far, John, that we haven't covered? 
No, it's just that the, it's the same things you said is it's really nice to be able to bug and look there. And in fact, I'll bet you if you go look at the reliable app uh, tab, your third tab and refresh in there, you might actually get a surprise yep. uh, of if it's actually ready. Because sometimes while it's closing things out, uh, it actually still loads things up for you pretty quickly. So. Surprise. <laughs> yeah, so here we go. So this is our app actually running in Azure Static Web App. So it did the build, it did the deployment. It's now globally distributing that, which is pretty great. And this is a simple app, yes. It just has an about and a products. But John, we now have it deployed. We're done for life, right? We never are going to change this again. Yeah, you, you talked about your reliable builds and you know your reliable process to get out there, but what about environments, Dan? I mean, if I'm a business stakeholder, the first thing I might notice is, you know, I don't want this to say products up there. I want this to say uh, shopping center or something like that. Yeah. But I don't want you to deploy that change on the production site. I want you to deploy it through a staging site for me. How do you do that? Well, fortunately, uh, John already kind of walked us through some of the features, and I'm going to jump into VS Code, and we're going to make a change real quick. But fortunately, if we come back over, you'll notice an environment's here. And right now, we just have one environment, and that's our production. And that's because we don't have any PRs coming in yet or anything like that at all. But notice down here, we have a staging area. So let's uh, play around with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is remember there was a new file added. Uh, and that's our YAML file for the workflow build process. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's run on over to our Git area. And we're gonna do a poll because we wanna make sure we get that workflow file first. Next, after that, we'll do exactly what John just said. We're gonna make a quick change somewhere. And then we're gonna go ahead and put that on a different branch. We'll then go into GitHub and we'll submit a PR. So let's go ahead and uh, try this out. So first things, uh, if I click on main here, this will actually allow me to create a branch. So I can create a new branch. And let's say I want to change the about type functionality. So I'll create a new branch called about. Now, you're going to notice as I switch to that branch, there's our GitHub folder that we talked about. So that has that YAML workflow. So let's go ahead and uh, go into the spell tab. And we'll go into source and let's just go to about here real quick. All I'm going to do is just make a real simple change to the title of the about screen here. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll say reliable web summit about page or something like that, because that has everything to do with our shopping app, of course. <laughs> So we've now made that change. You'll notice that it's over here in my Git area and I'm on my about branch. So let's go ahead and let's commit this locally here. We'll just say change title in about. Let's go ahead and add that. And now we're gonna go ahead and push this branch up to my repository. So let's push, should get prompted here. There we go. We don't have that branch, so let's add it. And now we're off and running. And that's really all we have to do to trigger what you're going to see here in a moment. So we'll let that go ahead and uh, do its thing. We could actually create a pull request right here, but some of you may not use this. So I'm going to jump into uh, GitHub real quick. And I'll show you that. Yeah, VS Code is just being nice. It can create the pull request for us, but let's do it manually. Exactly. So let's come on back and let's just go to the root here. Let that load. And there we go. So we have an about, had recent pushes. Let's go ahead and compare and we'll trigger a pull request. Okay, so I'm loving it, John. I got lots of detail here. I know those that were gonna review this PR are gonna be like, wow, Dan, thanks for all the detail. But I say it's time to do it. So let's create pull request here. Yeah, press the button. Press the button, right. Launch it. Now walk us through, John, what, what's this gonna do for us now? Yeah, what I like about this is it's going to create the pull request. And if we watch for just a moment there, there's going to be an additional comment that gets added with this pull request where it's actually going to kick in our CI CD, which in this case is that action that you created, Dan. Uh, it's going to show that it's building right there in the progress check, this build and deploy job. And you can click right on the details uh, link of that yellow icon. It says a yellow icon for build and deploy, and it takes you right over to the actions. And there we go. So it's pulling everything it needs container-wise for the build. 
and then this will take a little bit of time to go through it. But what's so nice about this is as it's doing the build here, which by the way is is as fun as watching paint dry. So I highly encourage you to just you know watch your build. Uh, we're not going to do that. But what this will now do is trigger off the same build. However, we don't want to update production, right, John? So this ties into the environment. So where is this actually going to send this when it deploys it? Excellent question. And you might have covered this earlier. So recall that we picked a region earlier, and we said that that might be important. I picked US West 2 because that's where I live. So it'd hopefully be that much faster. So now when this generates a staging uh, preview link for us and a domain, that is going to be put only in that region. They're not going to globally distribute that one because that's just one for testing purposes only. And Dan, there's a link that it creates and it shows it to you at the bottom of the build employee steps, but it's, it's easy to miss. What I recommend to people is go back to the pull request page and it actually shows you the link right in the pull request comments. Let's go on back there. And once it's done, we can even go back to the portal and we'll be able to see that link uh, right there. So yeah, let's go into here, back to our PR and we'll let this load. There we go. Nope, it's at the top there. Um, and you notice in the URL for Ambitious Hill, it says it's slightly different than the old one. It's got a dash one West US two. The West US two is exactly what Dan said. It's the region. It's this particular staging URL is only in one region, but the dash one is the number of the PR. So I'm assuming this is PR number one for this particular repo. Haven't had a lot of traffic on this repo yet, but I'm sure it's going to take <laughs> off, John. <laughs> and there we go. So we now have a staging site for this PR. Once we're good, we can, of course, merge the PR, and then that would trigger the build for our production version. And just to wrap up, before we let John take over with security, let's come on back to our environments, and we should see that we now have a staging environment listed as well. So that kind of walks us through the build process. That walks us through the reliability of that, as well as the CDN we got out of that. Uh, we also have reliability of environments because we have these different environments that'll load. And anything else to add there, John, before you take over? No, just that it's to reiterate to folks, this keeps both URLs up for you. So you still have your production URL and your staging URL. Uh, and when you close the PR, that URL goes away so you can create a new one when you're done. Excellent. Well, John, why don't you take it from here and let's look at, you talked about security and we need reliability there. So I'll let you uh, show that part. So Dan, you covered four of the five reliability aspects. Thank you very much. <laughs> now I'm going to cover security. <laughs> uh, just a little aspect here. So first thing I want to notice is that I've got a custom domain of view.shopathome.dev. Uh, there happens to be a React version, a Svelte version, an Angular version as well. And notice this little icon. That is the SSL certificate that comes with it. So by setting my own custom domain up and pointing it to the static web app, I automatically get SSL, which is great. But I also want to know that I am who I say I am. And when I log into my shop at home, if I click on my list, it shouldn't say unauthorized. I want to know that I am John Popper. So I'm going to click on this authentication down here. We can authenticate with Twitter, GitHub, or Azure Active Directory right out of the box. Those are automatically connected. You can also do custom authentication too. But for now, let's click on Twitter. It'll redirect me over to Twitter to allow me to accept the consent, which I will then give it. And it brings me back to the page. So now we can see it says, welcome John underscore Papa in the bottom left. It knows that I am indeed myself. So I've got authentication set up and I didn't have to change any code to make that work. I just have to let it go over and automatically connect with Twitter or GitHub or Azure Actor Directory. So then the next step is what can John do? If I click on my list, Notice I can see my strawberries and other things in here, but maybe I have to have some kind of preferred user level. And preferred users not only get to see their list of products, but they get discounts. So I click on discounts, I'm still unauthorized. It's because John Papa logging with Twitter doesn't have that permission. So for authorization, what I wanna do is I'm gonna show you, I've already configured this, that when I log in as John Papa through GitHub, GitHub is going to allow me, with this uh, credential, it's going to allow me to get to where I need to be. So I've got my home, my list, and my discounts. 
So to make this work, I want to go back to the portal in Azure, and I want to set up these roles. Now I've clicked on Role Management over here. Notice I have none at this point. What I want to do is create a new one. So I'm going to click on Invite, and I'm going to choose the different ones that I want. I'm going to choose GitHub. My user handle happens to be John Papa, one word. I want to give John Papa with GitHub credentials access to the View Shop at Home Dev. And the role I want to give this person is called Preferred. So that's a role that I set up in my code to say, hey, Preferred allows me to get there. And then I'm going to generate this invitation, which effectively gives a link to me. I could click on this and copy it and go to a new tab. And I type it in, and it's going to automatically log me in and give me access to that particular resource. So then when I come back to discounts, now I automatically have access to discounts because I am in the preferred role. Now, wait a minute. How, what do I have to do? I mentioned there was some code to get there besides setting up on the portal. For the preferred role, there's a file called static web app config. Now, this static web app config, I can set up all these rules in my routes. I'll zoom in a little bit more here. We can see that the API slash discounts route only allows people who have the preferred role to get there. So Dan, if you were logged in and you didn't have preferred role, you would see unauthorized for the discounts, wouldn't you? I would. So static web apps is basically checking it. And then if you can't get there, you can alternatively write out not authorized, I guess. Exactly. And to get to the products, notice I have get, put, post, and delete. And all you have to have is authenticated role, which just means you've logged in with Twitter or GitHub or Azure Active Directory. But for discounts, I don't just want to know who you are. I want to make sure you're a preferred user. So you notice you can set up these different rules that you have in here. You can also set up redirects if you want to. Uh, you can set up uh, server-side redirects to pages, return your own status codes if you'd like. Uh, and even do response overrides. There's a whole bunch of things that you can control. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about this, we have some links at the end to give you more details. But that's really all I needed to do to be able to get the discounts. So when I log back out again, notice I can't get to any of these things except the homepage again. The reliable aspect I love about that is you didn't have to write a ton of code to make that happen. Not at all. It all just works out of the box. So Dan, we just showed quite a bit with the application, the environments, the builds, and also the authentication and authorization. All that stuff comes out of the box with Azure Static Web Apps with very little for us to code, right? Absolutely. Uh, just the build process alone and deployment is just worth its weight in gold because that could be a lot of setup typically. And really, that's really our story for today, folks, is that you get to write the code and this service will automatically do a lot of that heavy lifting for us. You get the globally distributed web hosting with the CDNs, your free SSL, custom domains if you want those. You get your CI CD uh, integration with GitHub or Azure DevOps. You can integrate with authentication and authorization. Optionally, you can get Azure Functions. Please go see Craig Shoemaker's talk for more on that. You get backend routing rules that we just showed uh, for the authorization. And as Dan showed, you get generated staging versions all out of the box. And Dan, what if you want to choose your own framework? Well, that's the beauty of it. Um, you can. I mean, if you were writing a vanilla JavaScript or TypeScript app, it would still work with this fine. So whether you're doing Angular, Svelte, Vue, React, or something else, that doesn't really matter. You can choose what you like and then configure it like we just walked you through, and you'll get all this functionality out of the box. And don't take our word for this because you can try this all yourselves. Those four different frameworks happen to be up in the repo that Dan shared with us at the beginning. We happen to go down the Svelte path, and then I switched to Vue very elegantly to show you a different way to do it. Uh, and here you can try the whole thing in a free environment with this learning path. It's a free tutorial. You can learn more about the details of it in our docs link. And let's say you're not using one of these four. You're using Nuxt or Next or Hugo or 11T or something else entirely, you can click on this Hello Worlds link at the bottom, and there's a list of over 30 different frameworks that you can grab and try with static web apps uh, on your own time as well. So Dan, I feel like you were very reliable during this talk. <laughs> Do you feel like static web apps has made your life more reliable? You know, honestly, and it's not because we're doing this talk even, it's right now it's my favorite service out there um, because 
I need it in some other scenarios related to another uh, product I work with. And it has just greatly simplified and vastly reduced the amount of code I had to write for the DevOps process, the deployment process, the, you know, set up the CDNs. There's a lot to know with the cloud. And this does all that for you out of the box. Yeah, I almost feel like the reliability aspect is kind of like a secondary thing in some ways. I take it for granted that it's there, but it's the simplicity that I really appreciate and the consistency that it just it just works. It's reliable simplicity. Yes. <laughs> So thank you all for coming today to our conversation about this. And hopefully this story resonates with you. If building reliable web apps is something important to you, definitely check this out. And please hit Dan and myself up on the internet if you have any other questions. Thanks, everyone. Hey, it's Joe Eames with NGConf. If you like that video, be sure to click subscribe either here or here, somewhere over here. And if you're looking for something more, here's another video for you to watch here or there or somewhere. <laughs>